Okay. It says we are streaming live on Facebook. <laughs> so I'm just going to, oh, there we are. We're live on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a funny looking face. <laughs> Let's see. So if anybody is seeing us live on Facebook, give us a little shout out. We're going to check this out. This is the first time we've done this. And um, it looks as though we are live, but it also looks like we might be kind of frozen. So I'm just going to check on my phone and see while we wait for people to join us. Let's see. Yes, look at this. We are live now. So. <laughs> yeah, <it's working. laughs> okay, so I'm just going to go here. So I'm just looking at the right thing. All right. Hello, everybody. Now that we have figured out um, how to be live and all this fun stuff, it looks like um, we are, we're going to have, oh, good. Jill says we're not frozen. <laughs> Whoa. We have all sorts of technical difficulties here. Hold on. Okay. Okay. I have to turn off my volume. Hey, Alicia and Amanda and Jill tells me that we're not frozen and she sees me. So it looks like what I'm going to have to do is look at comments on here. Um, so if I'm looking down, that's what I'm looking at. And we are going to say hello to um, everybody out there. So I am actually joined today, you guys, by Cynthia Saska. Um, she is the founder of a beautiful online shop um, called What You Seek Is Within. Um, and she is just an amazing, amazing person. We met mm, a couple months ago, right, Cynthia? Mm -hmm. um, we were talking about some coaching services and um, realized pretty quickly that the universe had kind of brought together two people who have really, really similar views um, about parenting and that um, oftentimes what our most difficult kids need are um, parents to be shown that they already have the strengths that they need. They already have everything they need right within them to, um, to bring out the best in their kids and to do their best as parents. So that was awesome, Cynthia, um, to have that conversation with you. And I'm so happy to bring you on today. Um, before we get to your interview, I want to, um, just give a little bit of, uh, info to people who are coming in live, um, okay. and give them some context for what you're going to be talking about. And then we're going to go from there. So if you are coming in now, whether it's on the replay or you're live, drop a note and tell us, hello, tell us where you're coming in from. Um, and one of the reasons we're interviewing Cynthia today is because she is a sponsor of the seven day um, parenting makeover challenge that starts on January 31st, which is Wednesday. Um, and that challenge is totally free. It's open to all 19,000 people in the Facebook group. Or if you're not in the Facebook support group yet, you're totally welcome to join that support group and come on in um, and join our free challenge. So the way that you actually officially get signed up for the challenge um, is to go to www.honestlyadhd.com forward slash challenge um, and just get yourself signed up. So signing up gives you access to six days of great um, lessons and information on the six traits I, as an ADHD coach, believe all parents who are raising kids with ADHD need. It gives you access to a workbook um, that has some journaling exercises, some self-assessment tools, all that kind of stuff. Um, and it gives you access to a live masterclass that takes place on Tuesday, February 6th with me where we will talk about how to tie everything you learn in the challenge together and move yourself into momentum in 2018 to have the most amazing year with you, your family, your kids, um, uh, as you possibly can. So, but my very favorite part of all of it is that we are also doing some awesome challenges or um, some awesome prizes. And so I'll be giving away things like free coaching sessions, um, free access to some upcoming courses that I offer, some on-demand courses I offer. And at the end, I'll be giving a full scholarship away to my transformative ADHD parenting program, which will be opening up for enrollment 
um, the first week of February. Um, that's a, that's, you know, a, a um, prize worth over 500 bucks. So that's really kind of a fun thing for people to be able to get access to. So when I was thinking about prizes, Cynthia came to my mind because um, she uh, has such beautiful artwork. So Cynthia, you have awesome artwork, you have awesome jewelry, and if you haven't seen it yet, after this is over, go to whatyouseekiswithin.com, right, Cynthia? Hi. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And, um, and check it out because there's some amazing stuff. So I asked her if she would like to provide, um, you know, a giveaway one day. And she said, no, she wanted to provide a giveaway every day. So we get a bonus giveaway every day um, of something that's coming from Cynthia Shops. So that um, is going to be amazing. And I'll let her talk about that a little bit more. Um, so I'm just going to take a look at the comments here and see we have people coming in from Syracuse, Amanda and Alicia's in St. Louis, Jill's from Pittsburgh. Um, and I know my comments are always a little uh, slow. So you guys probably are seeing some other things as well. So welcome everybody. Now, if you're watching this on a replay, um, or you are watching it live, go ahead and let us know, are you in the challenge or not? Um, and so if you're in the challenge, just say I'm in. And if you're not in the challenge, head over to, um, honestly, ADHD.com forward slash challenge and get yourself in. All right. So let's get down to like what everybody's here to listen to, which is a really, really wonderful story from Cynthia. Um, Cynthia, I'm going to hand you the floor. And why don't we just start by letting us know, like, what is your connection to ADHD? And how did it fuel what you do today? Sure. So I have two boys with ADHD. One just turned 11 yesterday, and the other one's turning nine on Sunday. Uh, I was absolutely not prepared to be a parent. <laughs> My idea of parenting was so different from reality. Like I always had people tell me being parent would be difficult, but it would be worth every minute. Well, those people didn't have kids with ADHD. I promise you. Yeah. <laughs> there have been many days where I have thought, man, this is supposed to be magical. What is going on here? This is not magical. So my oldest son actually started exhibiting signs of ADHD when he was only three years old. Um, my younger son started when he was about five years old. Um, they're totally the polar opposites of one another. One of them is really loud, can't stand still, can't stop talking, constantly getting in trouble in class for talking all the time. Just he, he, he doesn't have an inner dialogue. It's a, his inner dialogue is outer dialogue. Mm -hmm. um, and the other one is pretty quiet, but he's still hyperactive during transitions. He gets in trouble at school a lot when he's in line. He, all the commotion that's going on kind of hypes him up and he starts poking at people and, you know, causing lots of trouble. Um, and he's pretty impulsive and he's got a lot of anger to him that my older son doesn't have. So those are two totally different types of ADHD that I've got going on here. So, you know, trying to parent ADHD is hard enough, but trying to parent two kids with two different styles of ADHD, if you will, <laughs> was even, yeah. even more difficult. So when my youngest son started, uh, I think it was kindergarten, he actually got kicked out of after school care. Um, he, he got in trouble so many times that they were just like, nope, you can't come back. So we had nannies. We actually ended up having three nannies. Um, and you know, the first one was really pretty good with both of them, but the next two just couldn't handle them together. So we ended up just having one of them with the nanny and one of them at after school care. Um, and it was really difficult, really difficult. And I was working full time, um, and, you know, trying to take care of things at home. And we decided that it was better for me to um, cut back my hours a little bit so that I could drop them off at school, pick them up after school and kind of be the constant that they really needed in their lives. Because there was just too much of this change happening and too much transition. And it just wasn't working for them or me. Um, my little one was in, in vice principal's office pretty much weekly for almost an entire year. And it was miserable for everyone involved. It is um, so miserable. You don't really think that that was ever going to happen to you. Like you weren't no. that. <laughs> no. So, 
But I, you said something really interesting and I don't want to cut you off. I just want to talk to our um, viewers for a second because you made a major sacrifice in your career to uh, be with your child. And I know I made a set similar sacrifice in my career to be with my child. Um, and I'm, I just want to connect with the, with the people watching right now and say how many of you moms or dads have had to really sacrifice your own goals and dreams for your kids. And, um, if that's you say, you know, just drop a one, drop a one. Yeah. I, I sacrifice, you know, whatever you want to say, but I just want to let people see that they're not alone in that and that it's a, it, it's, it's really hard and we shouldn't, uh, I think a lot of people just think, oh, you're a mom, you're supposed to sacrifice, but that's, that's hard to accept. So anyway, just wanted to connect with the, with people who are watching and Cynthia, keep, keep telling us your story. So then what happened? Um, so basically, you know, I, at that time when he was just getting those phone calls, I, I was getting those phone calls at work every week, having to leave the, the office, go pick him up again from the principal's office. I'm so sorry. I can't believe this is happening. I don't know what to do. I'm working, you know, such and such. Um, after that, I just really felt like a terrible parent. I felt totally alone. None of my friends understood the trouble that I was having with my boys. You know, they were like, oh, they're boys. They're going to get over it well, yes, they are boys, but no, they might not get over it if I don't make some changes. They might end up in jail, you know? <laughs> and so that was really the point where I became a seeker. And that's what I call it. I'm a seeker. I started reading every book I could get my hands on. I read parenting books, ADHD books, books on Ayurveda, meditation, spirituality, basically anything that I thought would help me, uh, essential oils, you know, anything. And I really, really got into the nutrition side of things. And I really started seeing that, that nutrition could really help not just my kids, but me and my, you know, the whole family, because both boys needing to change their nutrition. And, and I wanted to be a mom who led by example. I didn't want to be the mom who said, no, you guys can only eat this because you have ADHD. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to say, no, this is how our family eats because we want to be healthy and we want to be the best that we can be. And so that's really what I did. You know, we just did all this research and, and we ended up getting about a 75% reduction in the negative behavior over a course of about a year. So I still get calls from the vice principal's office, but it's generally only about once a month, maybe once a, a month and a half. We have um, standard SST meetings that we do once a quarter to kind of check in and help them out, make sure that things are going well. Um, but things are so much better than they used to be. Like, I don't feel, well, one, I don't feel alone anymore because I found a lot of groups just like Aaron's out there where there's parents who can connect and really have that community of, okay, I'm not alone. I am not the only one going through this. And there are others who can help me and lead the way, especially if they've already been down this path. Yeah. So uh, that's, you know, part of my message is, you know, I really want to help people understand that you're not alone and that there is a path to take. And it, it's a difficult one. I will definitely say that it's not easy, yeah. um, but it's so worth it. So worth it. Well, good. So, so the nutrition piece of it is so interesting. And I think, you know, um, we're a family that does some major nutrition components to it because my child has some um, genetic issues but we also do um, traditional medication too. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I, it's, it's just an interesting, um, it's an interesting time to be learning more about nutrition and how it can impact the, everybody's brain and how it can, you know, benefit, benefit our kids, benefit our families, all of that. So uh, yeah. that's super interesting. And I'm so um, like surprised and happy to hear that you were able to get that much of a reduction, which is, something I could never do. I am so bad at nutrition. I really, I mean, like I'm a really good eater, but I find it really hard to do that for an entire family. And so kudos. It's so you. difficult. It and, and people who I talk to about nutrition generally think like, wow, that's really extreme. I'm not going to go there. But what I did was I made it automatic. So basically I don't have food in my house that I don't want my children to eat. So yeah. yes, my kids still eat pizza. They still eat ice cream, but they eat it either at someone else's house, at school, or on the rare occasion that I say, okay, let's have pizza for dinner. You know, yeah. it's your birthday. Let's have pizza for dinner. But 
in general, we don't have those things in our house. Our fridge is stocked with fruits and vegetables and seaweed. <laughs> my kids love my it. fridge is stocked right now with ice cream. <laughs> oh no. Oh, no. Um, so let's let's segue into what you do with your jewelry. How did you come to um, found what you seek is within and what did you do? You know, how does that resonate with or, or how did you come to that for, yeah. you know, your purchasers, your customers? So after all that research that I had done, what I really kept coming across over and over and over again was that everything that you have is inside of you. And when I finally started to realize that I had heard it enough times that I finally started to take that into my mind as a belief, a new belief for myself. Um, which is a critical piece of this, by the way, is changing your own beliefs. When I finally did that, I came up with the mantra, what you seek is within to remind myself of all that I had learned. Um, so that in the really tough times that I was having with my boys, I could stop and remember, okay, everything you have, everything you need is inside you right now, whether it be happiness, peace, serenity, abundance, anything that you need, you actually have inside. All you have to do is stop and look for it. So I started using that meditation or that mantra in my meditation quite regularly. And just at times when I really, really needed it. And I thought, man, so I, I have a story kind of something about called a hope charm that was from back in 2006, I had had a miscarriage and I had this piece of jewelry that my husband bought me and on it, it just said our little one, we never named the baby. I just said our little one and I wore it every day and it brought me so much hope and peace that I remembered that feeling. And I thought to myself, I want to make myself one of those. I want something like that, that has my mantra on it, that can bring me that feeling of hope and peace that I need every single day to get through this. And that's how my jewelry was born. That's how I made my very first piece of jewelry. It was just for me. Um, and then I decided I, I should do something with this. I bet there are so many other moms out here who could really benefit from the same piece of jewelry that I have, the same mantra. And I just decided to turn it into a business. You know, I was working part-time to sac that sacrifice that we talked about for my kids. And so I really thought that, you know, maybe selling some of this jewelry might help. And, you know, maybe I wouldn't have to work. Maybe I could work from home and have even more time for my kids. Yeah. Um, which is, which is always the most difficult thing is given enough time. They need, they need more time than other children. I think more quality. Yeah. Yeah. They definitely, definitely do need a lot more nurturing and a lot more time. So the, what you seek is within uh, mantra, I think is just so interesting because um, I know for me as an example, and probably a lot of other people um, out there who are watching when my child before, before when I felt more out of control and I didn't, um, I hadn't gone through my own kind of transformative parenting process yet. Um, I, my child, I would be in, you know, target and my child would be having a meltdown oh. or, you know, I'd get the call from the principal and I would not know what to do. Like I would just start looking everywhere else, you know, for answers. Um, reading books and, you know, listening to videos and don't get me wrong. Those things are really important, but I, it wasn't until I really figured out my mindset needed to shift and I, that I was able to gain the confidence and kind of um, centering that, okay, when I'm facing this challenge, I've got this, even if I'm muddling through it. And even if I don't know my next step, I still have got this. I'm, I'm good enough for this. Um, and that I think is the message that I love with your jewelry that, you know, um, and with your journals and your shirts and all of those things. <laughs> and, um, and that I really want so many moms and dads to be walking away from the challenge feeling like I, I can do this, right. you know, um, and I don't need to look elsewhere for answers. And I don't, you know, I think a lot of, a lot of the struggle comes from judgment from others. Um, and so having that confidence that, Hey, it may not look to you all like I got this, but I got it, you know, <laughs> <I'm sure. laughs> so, well, awesome. Um, so the, um, 
Well, I kind of talked through actually some of these questions already. I have a little list of questions, guys. Um, and if you have questions for Cynthia, go ahead and um, write your questions in the comments. And if I get them, I will ask them. So Katie Sorensen just asked, um, where is the Facebook support group? And the Facebook support group, um, go onto Facebook and just... Um, uh, search for the Honestly ADHD Parent Support Group in groups and you'll find it. It comes right up. Um, and yeah, and I'll look back and see if there's any other questions for Cynthia on this or if you have questions on the seven day challenge as well. Um, so I think we figured out why you named your company What You Seek is Within. Um, and so I guess let's go to this question. What, what message do you have for any of the viewers that are watching now um, or that are watching on a replay? But um, for the moms and dads who are in that struggle that you and I both, <laughs> both like slogged through, right? <laughs> but they really are in that struggle and unsure that they have what it takes to, you know, that, that they're not really sure that, you know, that we're talking about that, <laughs> that they have, what, like, all y'all may have what it takes. I don't got it. What would you say to that mom? Um, I can assure you, it might seem really tough right now, but you really, really do have what it takes. Um, the one thing that I will say about finally getting to that place where you have enough confidence to realize you have what it takes is realizing that you need to start with you and not just your kids. Because in the beginning, I was so concerned about how do I help my kids? How do I help my kids? How do I help my kids that I forgot all about me. And I wasn't thinking about how do I be the best parent that I can be? Yeah, I read books on parenting and I took classes on parenting, but I wasn't really taking care of me. I wasn't getting enough sleep. I wasn't eating right. I wasn't meditating. I wasn't doing all of those things that I, I need. I need in order to be the best mom that I can be. And so some of those things that I'm sure Erin is going to teach us over the next seven days um, are really, really going to help you understand that being your best self will help you to have the confidence that you need to know that everything you have is inside. Once you get your mind around um, that one, that, that mind shift that we talked about, about everything you have is within you. That's the hardest part to do. And like I'm saying, you know, when you understand that your self-care comes first and you start doing those things, it'll come naturally to you. I think that that confidence will just come naturally. Right now, it doesn't seem that way because you're not focusing on you probably. You're probably focusing on your child and, and the issues that they're having. But when you try to turn around and shift into the positive instead of looking at, you know, well, this is bad. He got, I got a call from school today. He got in trouble for hitting. You know, when you when you switch your mindset to the opposite side and you start thinking about the positive things and you start grounding yourself in the morning so that, you know, instead of yelling when you really want to yell, <laughs> you calmly go to the other room, think about what you're going to do, and then you come out when you're calm enough to deal with the situation. Um, it's those things that make the biggest difference and will give you the confidence you need and really the understanding that everything you have really is inside of you, whether it's peace, happiness, abundance, love, anything, it's all inside of you. It really, really is. Yeah. And I think, um, I don't know if any of our viewers are going to feel this way. So, so if, if I am, um, if I am, if I'm, hitting on a nerve for you, tell, tell us in the comments. Um, because when, when I used to, when I was in my struggle and, but my struggle was long and hard. Um, but when I was in that and people would ask me if I was taking care of myself, I wanted to swear at them. I wanted to be <laughs> like, are you bleepity bleepity kidding me? <laughs> like, I don't have time for that. My focus is elsewhere. Right. And so if that's you, if like, you're a little bit like, I just want to swear at you all. Like if really, like if I'm supposed to go to another room and calm down and come back and talk to my kid, like if that hits a nerve for you a little bit, that's okay. Like, I just want to tell you right now that that's okay because I honestly, uh, it, it really, it, this is a natural slow process and so we're not going to jump right into some of that. Um, but you, what I do want to remind everybody is that um, when you learn that children are born, I mean, think about any mammal, children are born 
to um, watch their parents and to learn by example. That's how our brains are wired. And so um, when we are taking care of ourselves, when we are making good choices around, you know, our own impulse control or around our own, you know, um, diet changes or whatever it is, you know, exercising, those kinds of things, they, um, our children are picking up those nuggets and our children will eventually mirror back to us what we are, you know, reflecting. So um, that is part of, that's part of the transformation. That is a, that is a piece of it. You're absolutely right. So, um, and for you, it's a huge piece of it. And that's the good thing about all of this is that everybody's transformation is so unique. Mm -hmm. I love it. It is. (laughs) Okay. So I saw already that you are going to be taking part in the seven day transformation because I I saw your goals for the year. Why don't you let everybody know what your, or the goals for the challenge are. Let everybody know kind of what you said a little bit about that. Yeah. So my intention for this year with my boys is to really get some good quality time in with them. Um, having two boys with ADHD, it's really difficult to have happy family time. Mm -hmm. And when you're constantly in this state of negativity and you don't have more positive than you have negative, it really brings just the whole situation down. And, you know, we find that when we take family vacations, they're almost never happy. Like this is not a vacation. Who said this was going to be a vacation? It's not. I just got back from one of those. (laughs) We, we had a good time, but I, I know what you mean. So um, something that we've done is we've done um, like kid dates. So we'll take one of our boys with the two of us and we'll go do whatever they want to do that day. And then the next day or the next weekend or whatever, we'll take the other kid and we'll go do what they want to do. And those days are amazing because when the kid is getting all the attention that they could possibly want, there isn't anything for them to complain about. And it's so amazing to have those days and those moments of peace that you've just been dying for, for years, that it makes me want to do it more and more and more. So I think, you know, we're working up to the whole family fun thing. And and, and we've tried a couple of, you know, days recently here that didn't go so well, but I think the longer we do these kid dates and kind of get into the habit of really enjoying our time together, that, that it's going to make it easier for us to enjoy family time. Yeah. Um, one thing that we're still working on is, you know, the behavior between the two boys and, you know, everybody says, Oh, they're boys. They're going to keep fighting. Well, okay. <laughs> You're right. They are boys, but I choose not to have my boys hitting each other. I want them to learn to keep their hands to themselves. It doesn't seem like a hard thing to ask, but when you've got two kids, but no impulse control. That's what you get. Yes. Yes. And so, you make a really great point, Cynthia, in that um, when you go through, when you become, you know, the parent that you really want to be, or that your kids ADHD needs you to be, it doesn't mean that like your kids ADHD goes away because you can't <laughs> parent it out of them. And life doesn't just like, like your kid doesn't transform, like the, the ADHD doesn't leave. And so um, your know, life doesn't look perfect for any of us. Like if anybody thinks that because I, you know, coach parents or because you do what you do, that um, our kids are the perfect little angels. You No, no, <laughs> that's not about um, definitely things have gotten better. Right. Things have gotten a lot better. Mm-hmm. And on the days that um, on the days that I'm not so sure they're better, I have people to remind me like, oh, man, you guys have come so far. <laughs> but um, but yeah, it's still life. Life is still life. It's not about being perfect. It's about knowing how to handle it. So awesome. Okay. Well, Cynthia, I want you to tell us, um, there are, I see at least one question here. Um, and so before we jump to that question, I want you to tell us, um, what is it that you are going to be giving away? What are some of the prizes that you're going to be giving away, um, this week, this next week? Okay. So, um, I have seven different prizes. And I've got some jewelry and I've got a gratitude journal and I, I actually have them here with you. So I'm going to go ahead. Yeah. Quick. So um, this is the gratitude journal. It's actually one of my favorite pieces, even though, you know, like I designed it and I had it made and make it myself, but I love it because for me, journaling has been one of the biggest things that has made this change possible. And so I use my journal literally every morning 
I write 10 things I'm grateful for. I write what I accomplished the day before and what I'm going to accomplish that day. Wow. Um, That's so, <laughs> so it's part of my morning routine that I've learned to do that has really helped me. And, and in fact, when I don't do it, I feel all out of sorts and just like, oh my gosh, I, I need to go back home and get my <laughs> journaling done. <laughs> so this is my first one. And it's just got lined, um, lined sheets inside and it's got a little pocket in the back if you need it that's got some stuff in it so cool. really cool um and then I have a piece of art uh I have this on my wall all the time in fact if you can kind of see behind me in the back I've got three of them <laughs> oh them. yeah I do way back there yep <laughs> yeah um and this actually is my favorite place in the world it's uh Rocky Point in Oregon it's an amazing spot um, that particular image. And it just says what you seek is within on the bottom. So, you know, you can hang it up anywhere and remind yourself every day, you know, some put it somewhere you'll see it every morning and remind yourself every day that what you seek is within. That's really interesting that that place is a, I didn't realize that the picture image itself is a place that holds a special place for you. So that oh, yeah. I think that adds some sentimentality and, and meaning to that piece. So yeah. Well, what I else are you offering? All of them do on my site. I, I do all the photography too. So they're all images of places where I've been and I've, you know, taken photos there and then designed it into this. So cool. Um, I also have some jewelry. So I have um, this piece of jewelry that I have on. It's going to be very similar to this. It just has, this one has the acronym mm -hmm. WI. <laughs> so it doesn't have the whole thing, but I do have some pieces that do have the whole thing. Um, and let me hold that up. Maybe you can see that there. Yeah, we can see that. Yeah. And so this little beautiful. heart in the center is a lava bead and you can actually put essential oils in it, which I, I've been using since the beginning. I love essential oils. Um, I use the Jetties blend for my boys. It's actually specifically formulated for kids with ADHD and it helps relax them. I use it on them every morning. Um, and then I have another necklace here. This is our Lariat style. Stamped okay. also with what you seek is within. I like that. And then I have this bracelet that also has lava beads on it and uh, the acronym charm. Cool. And you can put essential oils on this too. And, and also on this necklace that I have. So when you say the diffuser necklace, because I think that's what we're giving away this. Um, so in the challenge, if you're in the challenge, um, the first week as we're getting ready, we have a couple of prizes. One is um, a coach, a free coaching session for me. And the other is a hand stamp diffuser necklace. And so is that one of those is what you were? Um, yeah, I think that is the standard one. That's this awesome. one here. Yep, yeah. it was. Yep. Okay, cool. So people can kind of figure out what those things are. That's awesome. Um, okay, so and I think, you know, we're coming up a little bit over a half an hour. So I think we're going to wrap up. But I do want to give you a, an opportunity. I see there's a lot of places for people to connect with you. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, what you seek is within.com. And I'll put some of these links into the um, into the dialogue. And then we have a couple questions I want to make sure are answered. Um, and then you also have a Facebook group called the Seeker Community for Mindful Mamas with Spirited Kids. I do. <laughs> Love it. That's awesome. So we'll it. put those two things into the comments. Um, and I think everything else you probably can um, get connected to through those two groups. Uh -huh. yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So I'm going to look at the comment questions here. And I know that um, I think Amanda had one, which was what were your top three most effective diet changes? Oh, <laughs> okay. Well, my number one is sugar. We removed the sugar. Um, Gosh, I can't tell you that that was definitely the most effective, but it's also the hardest. So I was gonna say, yeah. that's starting out, I don't think I would start with sugar because it is literally in everything you eat. <laughs> so mm -hmm. if you're not ready to go the fruit and vegetable route yet, I would yeah. leave sugar till the last. Um, but we also removed uh, wheat. So not just gluten. We're not just gluten free. We're, we don't eat bread. We <laughs> Wow. We, have, we eat corn tortillas and we eat coconut wraps um, and we eat, uh, you know, like kale wraps and, and things like that. We, we do have substitutes, but we don't eat bread in general, unless it's like I said, on pizza, yeah. we're having a special day. Um, and then dairy. Dairy has been a huge one for me and my uh, little son. He, <laughs> he hates cheese anyway. And it's funny to see the difference between the one who likes cheese and the one who doesn't. Because the one who loves cheese gets a, you know, 
every once in a while, but prior to that, he was eating it all the time. And, and, and one of my children is a little chubbier and the other one is like rail thin. And you can totally tell the difference between the one who eats a lot of cheese and the one who doesn't. <laughs> he's a very, um, I studied Ayurveda and so cheese is a very like sticky substance. And so it kind of just, you know, causes everything to get like balanced up. Yeah. Yeah. And so you could just see it in his body. And so I, since we took out cheese, things have been working much better for, for That's, everyone involved. I don't have my husband on board with the no cheese thing yet, but yeah, I don't know if you'd have me on, vol- if, uh, on board either. I kind of like my cheese. I love cheese. I know. I, I know. know. I know. And it's so it's like, just, I love, I love our group, our Facebook group, um, the honest, the support group, because I, you know, there are a lot of groups who, who really want to focus on one thing, you know, some groups are very pro medication. Some groups are very anti-medication and only, um, nutrition. And I find that, um, most parents, 90% of parents, you know, need something in between and Uh learning from someone like you who has gone really (laughs) far, like far on a spectrum. Like I, I tried that for like a week and I was like, (laughs) it does not work for my family. Um, but other, other people, it could work and they can learn either. They can learn to go the whole way or they can learn to go part way, Mm -hmm. or they can learn, pick up a few things and they can put it in their toolbox. And I just, I love that, that we are, um, an inclusive group that way, because, um, you know, I think a lot of people hear, you know, Oh, we do X or we do Y we don't medicate. We do medicate. Um, and they think that we make a judgment that everybody has to do the exact same thing. Right. And, um, I just love that we get to learn from each other, like all of it. And for some of us, you know, one thing's going to work and it's not going to work. And, um, I just, I, I commend you, but for the, the, I mean, seriously, it's for, for those. Yeah. And Amanda Jean says it too. She says, I admire the discipline that takes. I think my kids would go on strike, but maybe someday I'll get there. My kids have gone on strike. (laughs) Yeah. Although Amanda, you know what I would say? There is a book. Um, and I'll try to put a link on it. It's on my favorites page, but it's called, I think it's called the ADHD and autism diet cookbook Mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. And I bought it when I was trying to do something similar to what Cynthia was doing. Um, that book though, the whole beginning of it is about how to ease into some of these changes. That's the key. Yeah. And how to like, um, not just do it so that your kids will go on strike, but almost do it so that they don't even notice it. Um, exactly. And so I, I like that part of that book. So Amanda, I'll try to get you a link into that um, and see if you can uh, see if, if that helps you make some of the changes and, and start small, you know, start with one thing. It's it really important to start yeah. small and work your way into it. And the, the hard part is people will start small with one thing and then they don't see enough of a change. And so they stop. Yeah. So the, the key is start small, but keep going really keep going because you will see a change when you get to, you know, where you're headed, but it, it takes a lot of effort. And, you know, my kids still do have those days where they come home and like, mom, why can't we eat like normal people? (laughs) You know? Yeah. I get it. it. (laughs) All right. Well, um, thank you so much for joining us, Cynthia. And thank you for helping to sponsor this, you know, seven day challenge. I just, um, you know, I, I'm so glad that that it worked out that way and that you get to add so much fun value to the, to the group. So um, I really appreciate you joining us and I appreciate everybody out there for joining us. If you're not registered for the challenge, get yourself registered. That's the only way to get eligible for prizes um, and the workbook and the masterclass and all that fun stuff. (laughs) Um, And we are going to get started on the 31st. So um, anyway, thank you so much. And we will talk to you guys all later. Bye. Bye.